Hmm. So you are puzzled how up convolutions or better transposed convolutions actually work? Look no further. I will explain it to you without all those pesky math formulas. Sometimes when learning things, we tend to skip over the basics and try to get to the bigger picture. Is that you? It most certainly is me more often than not. But in my opinion, understanding the basics is a fundamental building block to actually reach proficiency in any area. How can you be an awesome ice hockey player if you can't ice skate? So this is why we go to the basics today. This explanation is based on the paper, A Guide to Convolution Arithmetic for Deep Learning, published in 2016. Even though the paper explains the concepts quite well, I still think that I can explain it a bit more focused and easy understandable, and the paper is linked in the video description. To explain transposed convolutions, let's quickly refresh our knowledge about normal convolutions. Simply speaking, the goal of a convolution is to downsample an input, typically an image, using a kernel. There are several parameters that are relevant for the explanation in this video. The kernel size, the input size, that is the width, height, and the number of channels of the input, the stride, that is how much the kernel moves over the input, and the padding, how much we want to pad the input image. To focus the explanation on how transposed convolutions actually work, we will focus on a very basic example in which we have a 3x3 three three kernel, a 4x4 four four input, a sprite of 1, and no padding. Additionally, we will assume that we only have one channel. So this is what our scenario would look like. The 3x3 three three kernel moves with a sprite of 1 over the 4x4 four four input, calculating the 2x2 two two downsampled output. The calculation is quite straightforward. We we'll just multiply the overlapping fields of the kernel and the input, and then sum everything up. So for this example, that would be 3 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 0 times 2, and so on and so on. And the result of that would be 12 as shown in the output. Now you would move the kernel as defined by the stride and repeat the whole procedure again. In our case, we would move the kernel by one field to the right. We would now continue with this until we've calculated all four possible stride steps in this example. Most implementations you find online will use loops to do the calculation, moving the kernel in each loop iteration. This is suboptimal in two ways. First, it isn't very efficient. And secondly, it will not give you that aha moment to understand transposed convolutions. So I will use vectorization in this explanation to do the calculation more efficient and to better explain transposed convolutions. To do the vectorization, you would need to prepare a convolution matrix. Since we have a 4x4 input, the matrix needs to have 16 columns and it will have a row for every stride step. So in our case, it will have four rows. To create this convolution matrix is actually quite simple. You take the input and disregard all its values. Then you overlay the input with the kernel in the position of the first stride step. Where the kernel overlaps the input, you fill in the values from the kernel. Where the kernel does not overlap the input, you just enter a zero. Now you flatten the resulting 4x4 matrix into a single row. That will be now the first row of our convolution matrix. Now you need to repeat this procedure for the remaining three stride steps. I hope this color-coded example will illustrate the general idea. This way, you will end up with the final 16x4 convolution matrix. Okay, now that we have this convolution matrix, and we called it C, what do we do with it? It is actually quite simple. Now we can flatten our input so that it is only one column with 16 rows, or just a basic vector, basically. And let's call it capital I. And now, basically, we just need to calculate the dot product between C and I. This will return a 4x1 matrix, and then we can reshape it to a 2x2 two two matrix, and this is basically the result of the convolution. Let's have a look at this in code. Okay, so here we are in code, and I use Python, I import NumPy, then this is the input that we have, it's the same one from the example. I reshaped input to get it into the correct shape, that is vector with, or a matrix with, one column and 16 rows. Then I have recreated our convolution matrix. It's again the same as, in the ex as I used in the example before. And now we can basically just run it and see the results. So I will make this a bit bigger 
so that we can see everything. So as I said, the input is now basically a vector or a matrix with one column and 16 rows. Our C is the same as before. And then when we do the dot product, we get this uh, vector or matrix with uh, one column and four rows. And then we reshape it into a two by two matrix. And so we get our final result of our convolution. Pretty neat, isn't it? You can go and check the calculation with the example I provided earlier and see that the results match. Okay, now we talk plenty about convolutions, but the goal was to explain transpose convolutions. And now comes the beautiful part that will also explain the name. But first, if you like this video so far, it would be great if you would subscribe to my channel. That would really help me a lot and would be much appreciated. We can transpose our convolution matrix C and calculate the dot product this time, not with the input, but with the output. The result is a 16 by one matrix that can be reshaped into a four by four output. And this is basically the operation that our transposed convolution is performing and hence the name. So let's also have a look at this in code. So we have our example from before and this time we go ahead and transpose the convolution matrix C and then we reshape our result. So this is the result that we got uh, from our convolution step before. And we reshape it so that it matches the arithmetics. And then we just do a dot, dot product between those two. And then we have a look at the result. So let's run it. So here we see the transposed uh, convolution matrix. We have our result that we have now reshaped to have the correct format. It's 12, 12, 10, 17, so it's the same result. And then we do the transpose convolution calculation or the up convolution, and we get this result that is a vector or a matrix or with one column and 16 rows. And when we reshape that, we get our final result. And as you see, the result has the same dimensions as the original input image. So it's four by four. And this is exactly this back and forth um, calculation that a convolution and the up convolution or transpose convolution is performing. An interesting thing to mention is if you think in terms of training a convolutional neural network, a transpose convolution is basically what happens when you backpropagate a convolutional layer because you try to update the weights of the input layer and that layer is typically larger than the current layer and vice versa. When you perform a transpose convolution, then the backward propagation is a normal convolution. So those things are basically the reverse uh, operations of each other. I hope I could explain the concept of transpose convolutions in an intuitive way. If so, it would be great if you could go completely crazy on that like button. That would really help me out a lot. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.